All right, so next up we have Marius van der Weyden, who is uh, on the Geth team and works on fuzzing and testing and some other things. Uh, I know Danny Ryan likes to take all the credit for the merge, but these guys played a crucial role as well. Um, and he's gonna talk about some of the bugs that they found and maybe some of the things that could have gotten horribly wrong, but didn't. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was actually surprised that, that, uh, that so little got wrong with the merge. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to stand here today and, and say that we didn't kill ETH, um, but we tried to. And this presentation is a bit about some of the uh, strategies that we use to kill ETH. Uh, and uh, it's a uh, big part of the presentation is about some of the bugs that we found uh, some of the interesting issues that have uh, have popped up uh, during the merge testing and also uh, before that uh, during our normal testing. So today I'm going to talk a lot about consensus issues. Um, consensus issues are differences between the implementation and the spec. Um, I think that's the big thing about Ethereum. Uh, we have a specification and we have uh, multiple clients implementing the specification. Uh, so for the execution layer, uh, we have four different clients that implement exactly the same thing and uh, we need to make sure that they do exactly the same thing because if, uh, if one implementation um, ch uh, rejects a transaction that, they, that the other implementations accept, then the chain will split into two and uh, we want to prevent this. And so we, um, over the years, we developed a bunch of testing strategies uh, for exactly these problems. And um, one, the newest one that we developed for the merge uh, are shadow forks. Uh, basically, we take a copy of the blockchain, uh, we uh, configure some, nodes, some of our nodes with the new rules, and at the merge transition, the new, uh, the new nodes create their own chain, uh, which is in parallel to the main, to the main chain. Uh, which, what is really interesting about it, both chains ch uh, share the same state, so all of the transactions that are valid on one chain are also valid on the other. Uh, this means we can, um, we can run tests with mainnet load, uh, which is uh, sometimes very uh, important to test for performance, um, and uh, also later on we will we'll see a bunch of issues that came up during shadow forking that we wouldn't have found otherwise. <clears throat> uh, another big part of uh, what we do is differential testing. Basically, because we have these uh, different implementations, uh, it has a, we, have a, we have a really nice uh, we have this really nice property that we can verify them against each other. So we create an input, we give it to the uh, different implementations, and then we collect the outputs of these different implementations and verify that everyone does exactly the same thing. Um, and there are different strategies to generate these inputs. We have, for example, the Ethereum tests, which are just static test cases where we know the answer for, for the test case. Uh, but we, we also created fuzzers uh, for creating just randomish uh, uh, transactions and, and, and contracts to test um, the different implementations. Um, something new that we all, uh, also did during uh, merge testing is uh, create malicious nodes. Um, malicious nodes are basically forks of uh, client software that does that changes some of the rules. And so malicious nodes can insert uh, bad transactions, change header fields, send really big values or no values, and um, can try to break the other nodes on the network. Uh, these malicious nodes, can uh, we have them for the consensus layer and we have them for the execution layer. And the malicious consensus layer nodes can, for example, uh, double vote, so vote on two different, uh, two, two conflicting blocks, which would mean that they 
can be slashed, um, or use fake signatures, send something, some weird network pa packages, and just in general try to cause mayhem uh, on the chain. And this is a non-conclusive list of uh, some of the testing tools that we have uh, built over the years. Um, for example, GoEVM Lab is a toolkit for EVM testing um, that we use to um, create a test case, execute it on, on a client, and collect the, the output from the client. Uh, we have Hive, uh, which is a really nice continuous integration uh, regression uh, testing suite uh, where we uh, have uh, we run these Ethereum tests, which is a set of 48,000 test cases every night against the different implementations and verify that nothing has gone wrong uh, when they uh, update something. And um, then we have these malicious uh, nodes, both, both on the CL and the EL node, uh, uh, the CL and the EL layer. And uh, then we have uh, some companies that we work with, uh, Kurtosis uh, and Antithesis, um, for fuzzing and, and, and test nets. Uh, these are like bigger test nets that we, that we set up, run once, one time through the transition, and uh, uh, then, then verify that the transition was correctly, and then we scrap the test net and, and start, from, start fresh. And then we have some, some kind of one-off tools, uh, like TXFuzz, which is sends some interesting transactions. It's not really for finding bugs, but more for creating load on the network. Uh, so if we create a test net, uh, one of the first uh, things that we do is use TXFuzz to basically hammer the nodes and see if, they, if something breaks there. Uh, with MergeFuzz was a one-off tool that we used to fuzz the engine API. And we have the beacon fuzz, uh, which is a tool that is, uh, has been around uh, very long and fuzzes the different beacon clients um, and found a bunch of interesting bugs. OK. So the rest of the talks is just talking about some of the interesting bugs that we found over the years. Um, this bug was found by Martin right before the merge. So uh, whenever, we have a, whenever we have a consensus upgrade, uh, whenever we have a fork, uh, we actually we, we ramp up testing, we, uh, we take out all the old tools that we have and, uh, and try to break it. Um, here, the Bisu client had a, had a bug in the gas calculation. Uh, as you can see there, the gas goes down, and at some point there's an underflow, and the gas goes extremely high. Um, this is a consensus issue because other clients will compute this correctly. And on networks where BISU is the only client, uh, this would actually be a, a DOS vector on the network because the nodes will uh, keep running the transaction and never stop. Well, they stop once this this amount of gas is, uh, is run out, which is basically never. Um, then we have the death of Kintsugi. So we set up the Kintsugi testnet, uh, which was the, the real big testnet uh, that we had, where we also invited um, the community to participate in, in testing. And on this uh, Kintsugi testnet, we set up the bad block generator, the, the bad block generator from, from the uh, execution layer. And uh, it changed the blocks. So for, for example, it created a block with invalid extra data. And this, uh, it actually, I think it actually set the extra data and Nimbus was unable to uh, sync because of that. And then we had the TX fuzzer running. The TX fuzzer created a transaction that had the revert opcode uh, in it, with a, and and this triggered a consensus an issue in Ethereum JS, and so they couldn't uh, couldn't th there was a consensus issue there, and then we had a, the three-way consensus split, which actually broke the network, and this was a split between Geth, uh, the Teku Geth uh, combination, and Biso and Nethermind. Um, yeah, so the. Three-way consensus split 
basically um, we had the fuzzer replace a block hash with its parent hash. Um, this block should be rejected uh, because the hash doesn't match what we, what we give it uh, within the engine API. Um, this check was actually in the, in the spec, but uh, some of the clients didn't implement it correctly. So Bisu did not have this check. Nethermind actually had the check, but it also cached the payloads by block hash. And so we looked up the, the, the block hash, the wrong block hash, and saw that it was in the cache, and then the, uh, the implementation just assumed that the, uh, that the payload was valid. Um, so this split the network into Geth and Nethermind Bisu, uh, with Nethermind Bisu being wrong, uh, Geth being actually the, the correct client. And then we kind of thought, okay, we're going to fix it, and we're going to keep the, the network running and, and try to, to get the network back, uh, back again. And, uh, but during this time, the bad, the, the bad block generator actually created another issue. It created the block where the block number was set to one. And in Geth, uh, we have a cache to check whether we need to sync. And one issue is uh, with Tiku, they executed all forks of the blockchain. There were like 30 different competing forks, uh, executed them simultaneously, which flushed the cache. And so we queried the database by parent hash and block uh, number minus one. Uh, block number minus one uh, was uh, zero, uh, which, um, which failed and triggered another sync cycle. And because we were trying to sync to the Genesis block, that actually violates some preconditions. Uh, so Geth panicked and uh, the, the Tiku Geth node uh, shut down. So uh, after we had this three-way consensus split, we de decided at some point, okay, it's just too hard. We're going to uh, deprecate, um, deprecate the, con uh, the Kintsugi testnet. Um, I already talked a bit about Hive. Hive um, we use Hive to execute a, a bunch of tests, and uh, most of them are spec tests. Uh, so we uh, for the specification, we create test cases, and I've found an incredible amount of uh, bugs. Uh, so shout out to Mario if he's, I think he's sitting here, yeah. And um, so for example, we had a division by zero in the exchange transition configuration call. Uh, some, some rules around the time step didn't really work. And um, so I've really found a lot of issues that we have uh, between Geth and the spec. Um, and then we had the testing the merge effort, uh, which was really nice. Over 400 people got involved with uh, testing the merge. They sent transactions on their test nets. Uh, they set up nodes, reported issues. And the most important thing, they created documentation. Uh, so we should be better at this. Um, we should be better at creating uh, documentation, but we are unfortunately not. Uh, so we kind of rely on the community to educate uh, other people in the community. And um, they also found some, uh, some interesting issues in, uh, in Go Ethereum that were um, kind of related on, on the usage of it. And uh, I think they also found a bunch of other bugs, so the community found a bunch of other bugs in different implementations. And then we had the shadow forks. Uh, the cool thing about the shadow forks is we are actually testing with the real network and the real data. And so one thing that uh, on, the, on the first shadow fork, we saw um, that the uh, gas limit was quickly dropping. And the issue there was the default gas limit in gas is actually, or was actually 8 million. And uh, we never caught that. Um, and we caught it for the first time uh, during these, these shadow forks. Uh, because on mainnet, m the, the, the miners back then um, voted to, to increase the gas limit. Um, another issue was we had a memory blow up during reorgs. There was some weird issue where it would reorg the node 600,000 blocks. 
and uh, this like increased the memory uh, until the, the node crashed. Um, Reorging 600,000 blocks is not something that we are able to do, um, but finding this issue actually uh, showed us that the reorg procedure was taking too, up too, uh, uh, too much memory, and so we changed it. And then we had uh, the base fee engine -ness. Um, Basically, the engine between the execution layer and the consensus layer is different. So what uh, consensus layer clients need to do is change the engine -ness of the fields. And Prism used the wrong engine -ness. Um, Thus, it created bad blocks uh, when the base fee was over 255. 255 because one byte, um, you know. Uh, yeah, I would really like to get you guys involved. Uh, testing the merge was a, was a, was a great way uh, for the community to be part of this. Um, and we have a bunch of new upgrades, a bunch of interesting stuff um, that we also want to test. So uh, test the search, test the verge, and eventually we also want to test the purge. And um, this community efforts is, makes me really happy that so many people are interested in this, are interested in contributing their time. Uh, so if you, um, if you want to uh, become part of this. I want to give a special thanks to uh, all of these clients, uh, uh, all of these uh, client teams and people involved in testing and testing the merge. And I want to give a, a special shout out to Martin. I hope he's watching right now um, for keeping us uh, and Ethereum stable. Uh, we're also currently hiring um, within the Ethereum Foundation to increase uh, the, the testing efforts, the testing team. Um, so if you're interested in getting a job at the foundation and, and uh, help us test the new updates, uh, contact Mario. And yeah, so for when I inevitably have too much time on my hands, <laughs> I have another eight minutes. Uh, I have a bunch of backup slides with more cool bugs and issues that we found. Uh, you might remember this one, the bug that took down in Fura. Um, basically, the memory uh, returned by the return data uh, copy opcode uh, was shallow copied. And so when we modified it, it broke something. Uh, and uh, we actually found the bug rather quickly and fixed it, uh, but it, the fix wasn't announced. Uh, we created a new version of Geth, and we kind of forgot about it. And someone actually found that bug and triggered it on mainnet because they saw that only 1% of the nodes on mainnet actually still have this, this version that, uh, uh, that's broken. Uh, the problem with, was that these 1% of uh, nodes were actually in Fura. Uh, included in Fura nodes. So uh, for three or four hours in Fura went down. That's why you shouldn't use a centralized RPC provider, but that's, a, that's, a, that's another issue. Go run your own nodes. Um, and uh, yeah, we kind of had to take the blame for this. Um, this one was also a really interesting one. So we have uh, fuzzers uh, that run on OSS fuzz continuously. And at some point, we got an email, hey, we have a panic. And whenever we get, a, get an email about a panic, that's usually pretty bad, because uh, then someone could just send a transaction to the network, and all of the guest nodes would go down. And uh, that's not great. So the issue was that um, you can see the comment that says, uh, choose shift equals B uh, minus 1. Uh, but the shift was actually uh, B, not B minus one, and uh, so that's the fix for the for the issue. And uh, we triggered this bug within the mod X precompile uh, when the modulo was extremely large. Um, yeah. Then we have the some bug that we've uh, got via the bounty program. So we have the bounty program. If you find something 
And instead of triggering on it on mainnet, send us an email. We're especially pissed if, we, if you send us an email and then go trigger the bug on mainnet. Um, so send us an email first, talk to us, and you will actually get a bounty. Um, the bounty size was increased to 200, 250k, um, and we actually quadrupled it for the merge. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, money to be had if, in finding, in finding uh, consensus bugs. Um, here, when, uh, when we input int 256 min, 2 to the power of 255, um, it would, the, the implementation of Nethermind for the, for the uh, modular operator would actually uh, negate the result twice, resulting in 2 instead of minus 2. So all other nodes computed minus 2, uh, Nethermind nodes computed 2, and so they would spit on, uh, split on a different fork. And um, this one is a DOS via malicious snap request um, that was found by, by Gary and Martin from the Geth team. And um, here the issue was that someone could cr craft a weird get try node packet. Um, that's, uh, that's a network packet that requested a missing try node and you could crash a uh, the guest node with it. Th these kind of issues are not that bad because you only crash one node. Uh, if, you, if we have crashes in, um, if we have crashes within the EVM, those are usually worse because you can crash a bunch of nodes. And uh, actually, during investigating of this, we created a fuzzle for it, and the fuzzle found a, a second panic. Um, here we have one. I actually wrote my master thesis on uh, fuzzing EVM stuff um, and created this fuzzy VM program. And uh, fuzzy VM found an issue in the copy opcodes called data copy code copy ex copy uh, return data copy. And uh, the issue was these opcodes uh, consume three items from the stack, destination, source, and length of the data to copy. And uh, never mind actually halt the execution if length was zero. So you can see this is uh, one of the tools we have where we can, um, where we have two different executions. We have two different traces of the execution and we can compare them. And you can see that here the, oops, sorry, here the, uh, the execution just halts. And that's, that's a consensus issue. Um, then we had an, an, uh, another issue found by Fuzzy VM was uh, a denial of service in uh, in uh, in Bisu. Uh, basically, when you call the mod x precompile, uh, Bisu would read all of the parameters, even if uh, uh, base length and mo modulus length were this zero. And so you could put a really really big uh, exponent, and this uh, could crash uh, uh, Bisu nodes. And this is the newest one that we've uh, found. Uh, right, the the one ten twenty two bug was actually uh, one ten, guess one ten twenty two was actually the version that we wanted to use for mainnet for the merge, and it contained a regression that cor could corrupt the uh, local state. Um, basically, whenever we uh, we have so we have these try nodes. This is where all the stuff from the all the contract state and accounts are stored. And when we modify them, they need to be flushed to the disk in the same order as they are inserted into what we call the dirty cache. And um, so you wanna you wanna insert uh, if if you modify D, B, and A, you wanna insert D first, B uh, second, and then A third, and uh, what we did was actually uh, uh, insert B first and then insert A, and then we saw that uh, we should insert D, but we saw that uh, B was already inserted, so the code assumed uh, that everything was correct, and we never inserted D, uh, so we ended up with uh, some dangling dry notes. That's it. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, thank you for helping testing the merge.
And I hope to see uh, more people uh, test and merge in the future. Thank you.